morning everyone it is friday and i am up getting prepped to head to <clears throat> suster and hicks and i thought i'd talk you through a little bit of the styling of my outfit today seeing as you liked it so much in my france vlog um so i'm wearing my bowfoot and blake jeans um the reason why i like these is because they're high-waisted so for someone that doesn't have like a lot of shape to her body i have to sort of create this look you're gonna hear ali making coffee and the dogs barking because there's lots of people in the garden today but yeah so i um i was really drawn to these because i um find that it creates a lot of shape for me and draws the eye upwards but also makes my legs look longer because i'm like five six on a good day five six five seven no five six on a good day and um I'm not like the tallest, but I'm also not the shortest. I'm very kind of av average height. But um, I think because I wear flat shoes, I can often look quite like dinky. So the crop also helps with me not feeling when clothes are baggy on me, I just feel a bit weird. So I want to ensure that I'm creating the silhouette of the clothes whilst also showing the silhouette of my legs. So the crop leg really lends itself beautifully. I am literally begging Beaufort and Blake to bring these out in other colours. I would love a really um, smart, plain denim, sort of with the contrast gold stitching, um, just like indigo colour. I would love that. And I'd also love more of like a vintage wash as well. Um, but yes, then I've gone for this oatmeal cashmere jumper. This is from Lily Silk. These are both brands that I work with, by the way. Um, the Lily Silk jumper is a really nice contrast to the uh, trousers so that it doesn't look too mono monotonal, but still creates softness, which I really like. Hair is always the best accessory in my personal opinion. It's why I put so much emphasis on my hair. I think if you invest in your hair, it always looks so much better and actually impacts the outfit a lot. Manolo Blahnik flats, they're comfortable, they're elegant, they show enough of the toe cleavage. I'm really big on toe cleavage. I don't like uh, the shoes to come up too high. I just feel it looks a little bit frumpy on me personally. Again, I'm trying to create that elongated look. So if you can get ballet flats that really just kind of come down to the toe cleavage and show a little bit of it, um, I think it works really well. Um, I think you don't necessarily always need a belt, personally. I don't often wear a belt if I'm wearing like all black. Um, but for this outfit, because I'm wearing a cropped blazer, I think it finishes it off and adds a little bit more intrigue. Intrigue is like my favorite word when it comes to getting dressed. Um, so I'm popping on my CDC belt. This was basically the reasoning why I wanted this belt so badly is because it looks great with jeans, but also as a waist, like a bigger waist belt on uh, dresses. I wouldn't say that the Kelly looks quite as good because it's so skinny. It kind of looks like it just doesn't fit the belt loops, if that makes sense. So we have to, and the good thing is, is this is like obviously completely adjustable from waist to blooming hips. So it does, it does work. I always put the belt on the centre one as well so that it um, isn't too like heavy on either side of the belt. Now I've spritzed my perfume whilst I had my underwear on so I've spritzed it onto my skin. Then I also spritz it over the top. This is BDK Villa Neroli. If you did buy the tester, where is the spout? Gosh that's hard to find. Um, if you did buy the tester of um, Soleil uh, Sole de Provence. This is another beautiful fragrance I think that you will love personally. I bought this myself from Harrods and this is like a like a muskier, I think there's amber in this and it's just, yeah, it's really, really nice. So I think you'd quite like the two um, personally. Not together, but I like, them to, like to have them as options. So that is where we are at for the moment. Now for the piece de resistance, I'm wearing for the first time in England, because, actually no, I wore this to farmhouse when I got back and I was too cold. It's starting to warm up. So this is a cropped blazer. This is from Suster and Hicks's black label. So this is their made to measure. So actually, if you like this, um, you can actually like order this and have it made to measure. So from your measurements, you're able to sort of send your measurements over and you are able to have it so that it fits you really nicely, but also, um, 
get this piece that is so unique. Initially I was taking inspiration from vintage Chanel jackets but that quickly evolved into like vintage Celine um, because I ended up going for a houndstooth um, almost like tweed and this fabric really is something special I'll show you it up close on the island and then I've gone for this sort of fleur de lis vintage button like style it's got a beautiful round neck but I've been quite different with the crop jacket rather than going really boxy as you can see it's nipped in on the waist there so it has this almost peplum to the back which for me just again creates that almost illusion that there's more shape to me than there actually is. And the reason why this fabric is so spectacular is it's actually a merino wool and silk blend by Caccia Poly, which is an Italian brand. And when I tell you that this is the softest, most comfortable little jacket that I have, it is like I'm being deadly serious. This is so beautiful and if you come up close you can see it has a lot of my favorite colors woven in to a really subtle um style so it's got a little bit of navy it's also got this burgundy oxblood rouge h that i've been loving at the moment but then it has those buttery oatmeals which means that it it pairs really beautifully with an outfit like this um, for the lining i went for this stunning almost like chocolatey with an undertone of red um, this fabric for me is one that I would probably want in other colours as well because it's so beautiful, so lightweight and then when you put it on it just makes the outfit, in my opinion. Like the structure on the shoulders, the round neck has a sort of paired back feel but an old time elegance as well. Um, I'll pop a link in the description box if you are interested in sort of purchasing this kind of um, piece if you wanted to get something that's really one-off like if you don't want to go for the same lining for example maybe you'd prefer navy or you wanted to go for different buttons then you can specify and make this to how you would want it but obviously if you're looking at it thinking Lydia this is exceptional then you can contact Seaster and Hicks and basically you can order it for yourself. As you know, I am a customer of Seuster and Hicks, um, but I just love their pieces. And I know that a lot of people often contact them wanting the same item and it's harder on their platinum label, but on their black label, this is so much easier um, to basically order from afar. Essentially, obviously these things take time to be made. I had to wait a few weeks for this, but it was worth it. And I've been waiting for this warmer weather where I can throw it on over a cashmere jumper and it be sort of my outerwear piece. This is a real transitional wardrobe, but I wanted something that I could wear from winter to spring and also summer to autumn because these colors are gonna go beautifully. So then I'm gonna go with the 25 and that is pretty much my outfit. I just need to go and put some jewelry on and that's it. Fragrance, hair, integral, classics, things that aren't gonna date, but also some really well-made uh, higher end pieces as well. So anyway, I need to get going and um, basically I'm heading back to Susan and Hicks today to pick up a, a coat and a blazer. As you'll know, I had surgery this time last year and my body has been settling for the last year. Um, I actually want to do a bit of an update in this video about everything, um, but I, need, I needed to have some tweaks done on these pieces just so that they fitted me better over the chest. Um, that was us thinking that we could kind of continue doing it. I didn't think that it was too drastic, the, the change, but actually it is. So we're just making some tweaks. So I'm gonna jump in the car. I'm taking my little bag pad out of here and popping in my little Udemy flips. Convenient, I love this for me. I've obviously taken the twillies off because I think this looks nice without it. If I get outside and I'm cold, this jacket was definitely premature. If I don't, then we're on the home stretch. <laughs> Mr. Min and Gordon has just been holding his eldest son yes. at the door to show him what's going on in the garden because he's very concerned and he needs to be kept, kept up to date at all times. He's like, who is doing what? And who needs micromanaging? He's like, let me at him, let me at him. <laughs> He's so funny, fixated on them. So, so happy.
Do you know what it is that I like about it? Is that it looks like it's um, like a boucle, yes, like texture-wise, yes. but then when you touch it, it's it just is, light as a it feather. It looks like it's raised, but yeah. it's not, it's flat. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. Only the Italians would do that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm actually nowhere near Suster and Hicks now. I am currently at our local garden centre. I wanted to pop in here because they have um, like a, a fabrics and upholstery uh, place that I've been meaning to come and visit for a while. So I went in there because I want to see about getting blinds or some kind of blind or curtain made for the eaves upstairs. Obviously on the, on the landing, I'm gonna just replicate the same fabric that we've already got in the hallway on the ground floor. Um, but obviously, blinds for Ali's dressing room, blinds for mine, just because I think it softens the space a little bit. Um, so I want to basically look at fabrics for that as well. And I ended up going into, they've got like a new wine shop here. I think they're, they're putting like retail units and they're probably not quite expensive because obviously retail units as a whole, especially out of major cities, probably aren't a huge business anymore. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, that's just my thoughts because I was the only person in there admittedly it's a Friday it's not particularly like busy but whatever but anyway it was kind of like um you could tell he was like a really passionate guy so I knew I was gonna buy something because I always love people when they speak about like passionate when they speak passionately about things but I um ended up buying a bottle of wine and it was it's a Malbec that is aged in concrete not oak so very interested to give that a try um, and it also paired nicely with a lot of meats and also barbecues so if I wanted to have like a glass of red or something in um, the what's it called in like the summertime just randomly I thought it would be a good one but I liked the bottle as well I'll show you the bottle when I get home yeah the bottle sold it to me more than anything but also it being aged in concrete so I'll try it I'll let you know I'm back home now and I'm mid like unboxing and eating and doing lots of things. And I have to bring you up to speed on, on one of Mr. Mill and Gordon's pet peeves. Mr. Mill and Gordon has a profound dislike of people who put half of any kind of vegetable back in the fridge. So if you use half an onion and put like the other half back in the fridge, like if you cover it up and stuff, he doesn't like it. So he's just gone to the fridge and he's seen that there is a half an onion that I have wrapped I in a... Pardon? I wouldn't mind if the food in question was actually used rather than just sitting in the fridge and then going off. That's the difference. I don't, I'm all well, for not having any waste. That's fine, but sitting half eating vegetables in the, free, in the fridge and then they're never getting used is wasteful. Well, the thing is, is I fully intended to use the other half of that onion last night to make a risotto. Because it was the other half that I used for another risotto, so I thought Pim's o'clock. But, the lovely satin cooked for us. Yes. So, I didn't get to do that, unfortunately. Um, maybe tonight? Yes, maybe tonight's your time to turn to I could do that, and also I need to check in on the veg in the fridge, because we have loads of veg, so I need to like make some vegetable pasta things. Anyway, anyway. So I said to Ali, do you know what I think would be a good idea is instead of us buying big onions, we just buy some shallots. And what did you say? That would be a shallot easier. That would be a shallot easier. <laughs> I wish I was that quick. You're probably the only one that finds that funny. Right? No, I guarantee, uh, babe, everyone finds you funny on my channel. Everyone finds you funny. But I wish I was that quick. I would never even think of that. You're so quick. <laughs> You're quick in humour. You always know what to. Humour, wit. I don't know. But anyways, it was very funny. It made me laugh. And then we have all of the animals frequenting the area. Lumi's in the cupboard, and we have progress in the kitchen garden, which is wonderful. Pretty much, I can check. All oh, the guys are out there at the moment. Uh, they're actually putting the manure into the new beds and they're on the last bed at the moment, so I'm gonna leave them in peace and show you them afterwards because they're looking excitingly ready for spring, which makes me very excited. And we're back here. I've been hiding away up in my dressing room. I've actually got less than an hour of, um, I've got less than an hour of the book that I've been reading left and I'm so happy <laughs> to have this book, like, at the end. <laughs> 
Honestly, I'm so happy. As you know, I've been listening to, to Spare and it's the final hour, very much like present day stuff. And um, you're never gonna have to hear me speak about Spare again after this, I pinky promise. Um, but yeah, I think I'm, I've been trying to get to the bottom of why I feel so like, like I, I feel so strongly about this book. And it's so funny because I would never normally like be bothered about listening to a book like this. Like I, I've never ever read a single book on the royal family ever. Um, nothing to do with Princess Diana, nothing. I've just always kind of consumed things through the media. And I think for me personally, I have this real like, this real oh, thing about the, the truth, but also the way humanity sometimes, me, myself completely and utterly included in this, like I'm not <laughs> me and humanity, but like, it's like a, we don't, I personally think, and I'm just, this is just from my personal perspective, and I think there'll be people in the comments that say like, Lydia, you're only just realizing this, but I'm like realizing that I, I, I've never been aware of how often I absorb small snippets about, inf about I think, small snippets about things that I'm not really hugely interested in, and I'm not hugely interested in them, so I'm not gonna go and do any research on it, and I just take the small snippet of information and I believe it, and I take that as like the truth, and I can't believe how long I've done it for. And so I feel, I think this is the thing, I think it's like a real sort of epiphany moment. Hold on, I'm gonna sit down because I'm making myself feel nervous stood up talking to you. Let me get you a random thing. Ah, oh, my biggest tripod yet, the oil. Um, Oh, I have some water as well. Mm. I think that um, that's the thing. I think it's been like such an epiphany for me. <laughs> epiphany? I think that's the right word. So when I read a flippant um, news article, that title, or saw a post on social media or whatever, and I think that that's the thing that A, has been hugely enlightening for me, but also I've then been able to establish why this is so hard to explain so bear with me but i think that there's an element of experiences that you will only ever be able to have empathy for when you have experienced it at all and one of the things that I am trying to do is obviously I have never experienced being a member of the royal family, but I'm trying to now with the few experiences that I've had in my life, very few, I'm trying to, when I don't understand or know of an experience, be empathetic towards it anyway. And it's really serving me well. I would say like no negative things have happened since I've decided to be less skeptical of these things and more empathetic and understanding. Um, so that's a good thing, I can report. And I feel really, really strongly <laughs> about like, I think it's just, I think it's about like, that above everything, it doesn't really matter what's happened as long as you're being kind to everyone. So throughout everything that when I've been talking about this book, I've obviously been talking about Harry and not once have I had to feel the need to be horrible about William and Kate. Um, just as an example because I have no ill wish for them. What I have done is like listened to someone's story and been able to understand that, wow, like there are so many things that happened and so many things that I didn't know and so many things that I believed that were incorrect. That still doesn't mean that I have to be unkind to anyone else. Or even if I don't believe it, I don't have to be unkind. I can just be indifferent and I can move on with my life. And this, these are all honestly, genuinely like lessons for me. And I just, I think this is probably where it's been such a weird experience reading this book because in all honesty, like 
I'm not interested. I'm not interested in the nitty gritty of, of family life for them. I'm really, I, I really like the royal family for like what they stand for. And I'm just really proud that we have one. I know some people aren't, don't like that, but I really like that we have a royal family. But I'm not, I don't really care about the drama and, and who gets on with who and who wants to be better than who and this, that and the other. But I do care about truth and kindness and also maybe changing the way that we are sometimes, especially with like this new internet that we have and this ability to be so unbearably unkind to people. I just, it, it, I think that that's the thing. Like I'm also following the case, well not following the case at all, but I know that every time I get a news bulletin, I check my phone to see if um, that Nicola bully has been found. And then you hear that people are doing awful things and saying awful things about her and you just think what happens to people to make them do that to each other? Like what happens to people to make them want to do that to another person? I just, especially in their time of like the worst thing ever. And I know that obviously what we went through with Lynx is a different thing when it comes to a, a, a human, I understand that, but we never ever found out anything. We had kind of had to piece together what we could when it came to, to links. And during that time, people, you know, we would get messages from people saying that they had him. There were messages of people saying that we killed him, that he left because he hated us. And you realize in that moment that like, Really, it doesn't matter whether Harry and Meghan and um, Will and Kate have drama. What really matters is how humanity has become so comfortable being absolutely abhorrent to each other. And I think, especially in England, I think that we make out that we're like this really polite and lovely and, I'm so sorry, culture. But there is a big thing about the media and like the magazines that I consumed, not consumed, but that were available growing up, you know, where they had the circle of truth and they were like circling women's cellulite. And then there was like the gossip um, magazines. And then there's the tabloids where they can just, you know, say things and do things and, and write awful things. They can do wonderful things as well. I'm not just saying they do bad things. They can do wonderful things as well, but it kind of sets a precedent and it almost makes it seem like being that horrible to people and being that awful is okay and acceptable and a lot of the time it's done under the guise of holding people accountable and I've just never been of the mindset where I felt like I, Lydia Millen, deserve to hold anybody else accountable for anything. Sorry, I will get to the point. I was actually just going to tell you about some products that I was interested in so I will skip over this bit if you don't fancy it. But sometimes we cling to snippets of information, even if we know that those sources maybe aren't reputable, just because maybe we feel some type of way about that person, or maybe we don't really like that person, or we kind of want something that comes along and validates how we feel about it. It doesn't matter whether it's actually from a viable source, but yeah, see, told you. I told you there was always something about her. I told you that, that you know, she's, she, I had bad vibes about her or whatever and or him or who or whatever and it's just like I just I've become very very fascinated but also almost sad and tired and I find it difficult to communicate because I know that this is the world that we live in and yet we don't have we we should we don't need to live in it there's nothing there's nothing saying that this is how we need to be. We don't, we absolutely don't. And I just would love to know where it all kind of comes from. I think that's the biggest thing. And like I see it on, on my social media feeds all of the time. Obviously it was my turn before Christmas, but now I'm seeing somebody else's turn and somebody else's turn and this, that and the other. And I'm like, 
where does it happen? Like, where does it come? Like, why? I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> we've gone down a very depressing route and nearly cried then. There's just a lot of realizations of just how unkind this world is. And I find that really tough, really tough. Because I'm at the end of the book, I can say that I don't need to talk about this anymore. I've, I've, um, I've listened to the book. I completely understand why he wanted to write the book, completely understand it. I, I, I think that if anybody reads this book and doesn't understand why he wrote the book, then I, I think that you're in a very unique and lucky situation where you've probably never found yourself in a situation where you felt like you can't defend yourself. Um, I think that that is the, the thing that I'm seeing here. It's like someone just trying to defend themselves and put their story in their words from their experiences out there. I understand. <laughs> and I'm never going to speak about this book on my channel again, I pinky promise, but I'm glad that I listened to it. I'm glad that I sold it on because there were so many times when I was like, I really just want to read my next book now. <laughs> One of the other things is like, I'm, I'm so happy that he like named so many things. Like I, just listening to him talk about like so many brands that I love, like Soho House. I saw the girls at Soho House the other day and I was like, how amazing that you were able to provide them with such a safe space for the early po point of their um, relationship. That's a testament, an actual testament to how amazing the staff and the culture at Soho House is. I just, yeah, I really did love that. And obviously I loved the nod to Arden Eight Hour Cream. I think that the fact that Princess Diana loved it um, is so wonderful. And the fact that obviously it helped in the funniest of ways, I think is just lovely. But anyway, yeah, that's my, that's my two pence about that and that's me done. So I was gonna tell you, I got another of the Revlon Super Lustrous Glass Lips and I think this might be a new favorite because it's not quite so vibrant as my other one. I've actually got a bit of both on. I'm gonna try this on its own. But this is Glaring Coral. So the other one that I use is Dewy Peach. And I love it. I think when you wear like a white dress or whatever, it's, yeah, this is lovely. I mean, I think I probably had it on right before, but this is just a little bit more like subdued and not quite so vibrant. And I love it. Um, absolutely. Love it, so I'll link that one down below because I know that these like go out of stock so, so quickly. And I also want to show you quickly what I got the other day. I got the loveliest Sicilian Thyme Soho House candle from my lovely friend, my lovely friend Paula. Oh my gosh, that smells delicious. Sicilian Thyme, oh, I love that. I've never smelled that one from Soho House before. That's gorgeous kind of like a sweet oh wow I hope they do that in big candle my goodness me that's lovely and then some new in bits which I have a um, sample which you guys know one of the things that I am really really hot on and I have been for like as long as I've been a youtuber is samples I will always get these ahead of the game and I cannot wait to get my hands on this because obviously I've been using, I've, I've like found my like baseline skincare, but I'm missing a little bit playing around with skincare. So I can't wait, can't wait to try this. Then I've got the new in advanced light ceramide capsules, which I actually test drove these when we were there. And these, oh my goodness, so good. A little bit of white tea. And then I've got some new moisturizers to get to grips with as well. I've got the Ceramide Advanced uh, Moisturizers. So that was a very, very lucky day. And honestly, I hugged the lady from Elizabeth Arden and I was like, you smell incredible. And I always forget, this is the most beautiful fragrance. My mum loves this as well. It's so delicate, but still like, it's so unique. I feel like you never know when someone's wearing this. It just smells like nothing you've ever smelled. So this is the original white tea, which I loved. Um, the other thing that I have been sent, this. 
I followed this company on TikTok and I don't know whether they saw or what, but I have seen this tan remover all over my TikTok feed and I have to try this. This is a 60 second self tan remover. And do you know what? I think I might try and put this to the test over the weekend because they literally put it on and then wipe it off and it's like leaves like a white patch. So, and it smells incredible. This is the rose and caramel. Oh my gosh, it smells like really like fruity. And they've also sent me their medium dark tanning foam from Rose and Caramel. So I think I'm gonna give that a test drive as well. I love trying fake tan because I feel like nowadays it's like everything's kind of come on such a long way that like trying different fake tans is so much fun. So yeah, anyway, that was that. Um, Ali has been watching a film downstairs. The guys from Nicholson's have finished up everything's kind of been cut back they've got another day to come and do one thing i will say i have never encountered anyone that works at nicholson's that isn't like a wonderful person i can't put into words how lovely their entire team is no one like there's not been a single person that has ever showed up at our house and there's been multiple different people there hasn't been a single person that has shown up with a bad attitude that's grumpy that's unfriendly everyone is just lovely and i feel like that's a testament to to liz because liz who owns nicholson's is such a lovely person and it just obviously shows that she really does pick wonderful tea like wonderful people and this is not me saying that like our, us doing our project with them hasn't gone without its like hitches like every pro project there are obviously some like setbacks and what have you but like the one thing i think that is important is that it's acknowledged when a team is actually just a joy to work with. Everyone, just a joy, like an actual joy, no bad attitudes, like just, yeah, I feel like that's really important because there's nothing harder than communicating with people when you're trying to like resolve something that you really want to be lovely and you know you don't want to lose that sort of um, line of communication that open line of communication but being met with like frostiness that it never not once with them and so anyway let's go out and inspect what they've been getting up to one of the other things that i've finally done as well is i have paid the deposit to have all of our cushion covers recovered in a beautiful soft sage green outdoor fabric with beautiful white piping i decided to go for something plain and then add intrigue in the cushions instead so that I didn't have to keep having the um, seats upholstered. I thought a nice green that will match the outdoor green tones that we have in the greenhouse, on the back door, etc. So I paid the deposit, waiting for the fabric to arrive and um, hopefully then it will look a bit more finished and a bit more cohesive out here because we had grey covers on the on the dining chairs, cream covers on the um, sofas and then striped ones on the sun lounges. So yeah, gonna get them all looking nice and cohesive. Everything has been mostly cut back because as you can see, there are shoots coming through um, on plants. So they all needed to be cut back and the dead removed. So it's all looking a little bit tidier as well out here. And as you can see, we have freshly manured beds all looking very very beautiful and wow the snowdrops have erupted in the woodland it's very very mild today um so yeah and they've also added lots more soil to my asparagus which is wonderful and i've even got a few little overspill from my neighbor's garden of snowdrops coming through which is lovely also whilst i've got you I wanted to tell you about the uh, Holland Cooper Gilet because I posted this on my Instagram and I don't think I've ever had any, as many DMs as I had about this. So it has gone and this is not just because I work with Holland Cooper, okay, I, literally, I don't have to put this in, um, but what I would say is that this has gone straight to the top of my Gilet like wardrobe because um, this is beautiful and the quality of it is more ex i think is it more expensive than that i don't know i think it might be less expensive but anyway the leather trim on this is so beautiful you could wear this 
with all of your tan accessories, I reckon. And then I really love this embroidered, very subtle branding of Holland Cooper. But it just, like if you pop your hair up, it's just a subtle bit of detail, which I absolutely love. And it's got this little embroidered emblem here. So super, super like subtle um, detailing, which I think is perfect. Cozy pockets, good length as well. So it covers the midriff a little bit. You can pull your layers out underneath if you want. Um, if the weather gets a bit better. Um, this is definitely a layer that I turn to for being outside, just to keep me warm, but free my arms up. And they come in so many colors, but I love this. Very, very nice. So I thought I'd tell you about it because I'd actually say, arguably, I mean, when if you were to buy it, you'd know what I mean. In terms of like thickness of, of um, fabric, it feels a bit like a cut above the rest when it comes to these gilets. So um, yeah, like I said, don't have to tell you this. Um, I could just leave these in the lovely box of things that have been sent to me this week, but I've been trying them, trying them out since they arrived, and I would say that these are game-changing in the world in the world of gilet it like blurs that line because it's got that real real kind of premium detailing with the leather trim anyway I'm telling you about this I'm waiting for my husband to get a bleeding bloody move on because we're supposed to be going on a dog walk <laughs> What an exciting oh, day! Yeah, Our first grumpy lamb! Probably the first time she's seen a dog. Yeah. We've so got she... Mama with three of her lambs. Oh, look at this little one. Hello! He, he must be the. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Barkley's like, I really want to play! Wow! Yeah. Wow. Well, that was such a treat. I was not expecting little Poppy. I mean, it's it's like the weirdest thing is it's like not. I'm surprised that you're not on the floor, Ali, because you're Mr. Squeamish. But basically, we got to that first field where I showed you that we've um, got the first of the lambs, which is always the most exciting time when it comes to spring I think once the lambs start coming oh my goodness it's incredible and then we've got to this field and we very quickly realized that one of the lambs in there was very like it had just been born because it was still yellow the mum was still cleaning it the afterbirth was still like hanging out <laughs> and then we sat there and another sheep gave birth in front of us and in all honesty I was I like I honestly thought I was going to cry. There was another couple that walked their dog that we often see on dog walks. And, um, oh my gosh. Like, I feel like we've just got a new badge of honour in the country life. <laughs> like, literally, we just w watched the most amazing thing, like, seeing a, a, a sheep give birth. Oh, spring's here, guys. Spring's here. And it's going to make Ali late for this evening out with his friends because we've just stood there for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very special moment. That was very special. Wow. Very different seeing it on TV versus seeing it on the oh, yeah. It was a very quick. Very quick. Well, well it, it seemed, no, it yeah. Said that the head has been out for a little while. Yeah, yeah. Had a kangaroo bike. Yeah, and we. When, it, when, it, when she got back up, it just sort of blocked out. Yeah, it literally it must be a very like hard thud to reality. Like, oh, I'm here. <laughs> Somebody does not want to get into bed. You're being a little slug on the carpet. Oh yes, oh yes. Mummy, I don't want to get in with my brother. You're in your bed. You're a very good boy, very tired good boy. It looks like you're smirking. <laughs> and tired mummy who is about to oil the life out of her hair. I don't think you're gonna be tall enough there. Is that all right? Oh, that's a bit wibbly wobbly, but we're just gonna hope we don't smash the sink. Um, what an evening. Both Ali and I could not believe that we got to witness such an incredible experience. 
it was so funny because we were just walking across the fields and we were like, oh my gosh, the first lambs of spring. And we were trying to work out what was going on. So we were guessing that the, the, the um, sheep were giving birth and um, then the, the farmer or the shepherd was moving the lambs into and the mums into the other fields, so separating them from the others that are giving birth. Um, all the fields were open, so it's probably that they'd like started. And then we got through to the field that we often, like we, you'll often see us walk through it, it's where it's quite open and um, flat, and sometimes there's sheep in there and sometimes there's not, to be honest, it's like any field. Um, and we were walking up and Ali spotted um, two people that we have seen in the pub before, which seem really, really nice, and they all often walk their dog at the same time. Um, but they were stopped in the field and Ali looked and he was like, oh my goodness, it looks like that baby has just been born, like that little lamb has just been born. Because it was still like yellow and the mama was cleaning it. And then um, we realized that the sheep behind that one was mid giving birth. And I was filming that clip of her like going, like sticking her schnoot up in the air and just as I turned it off, which I'm kind of glad because I kind of, I don't know, like it felt a bit weird filming her anyway in that state. Um, so I certainly wouldn't have wanted to film the, the, the birth, um, which is weird, isn't it? Because it's a, a sheep at the end of the day, but I don't know, I just wanted to be respectful. And um, the baby just flopped out onto the floor and we all sort of laughed about it really because it was obviously like a, a, a thud down to earth, but obviously it's very different for um, a lot of animals because um, they obviously have their animal, they have their babies and their babies can like essentially walk within minutes, if not hours. And they like feed themselves essentially by going to the mum's bosoms. <laughs> and yet we, like humans, babies are born essentially completely dependent. In fact, I remember reading a book, I can't remember what book it was, it was by the, by a comedian lady, what was her name? I listened to the book and she really sort of like put it into perspective how much humans, like we're essentially born way earlier than we should be. And it's like years before we're actually like able to be by ourselves. Um, yeah, so we're not as sort of developed when we're born. I'm just oiling my hair, by the way. I'm popping um, the rosemary oil at the roots. I'll grab my little scrubby brush in a minute. And then I'm just putting some like argan oil at the tips. And that's my sort of routine. I'm wearing a pair of green pajamas from uh, Amazon, which I found the sage green ones in short sleeves and I will link them down below. Also, I wanted to say I have officially finished Spare, so there'll be no more talking about it. Um, but yeah, I've finished it and I've started Sp Spoon Fed by Tim Spector. We, lis we listened to his podcast um, just at the end of December, I think it was, or was at the beginning of January, I can't remember now. And I downloaded his book then, but I wanted to get through Spare first, and um, I think this is going to be really, really fascinating and probably also interesting for me to explore with regards like to my stomach problems and things like that because obviously I've been speaking to you a lot about things that I've been experiencing and I just kind of, I should really just go to the doctor but I just feel like it's one of those things that's just so unimportant on the grand scheme of things. I feel like we all learned during Covid that like you only go in like really serious circumstances and it's just like... I've lived with it for so long, but then also am I doing damage that could make, put me in a position where I need it, like need the doctors seriously one day. You just don't know. Let me get my scrubby brush. So yeah, it's an interesting one. Anyway, I'll be interested to um, sort of do a little bit more, but tomorrow we are going on a hike. So it'll be Ali, Carrie, Carrie's boyfriend, we're all going on a hike together. A pre-spring hike and if the weather is as beautiful as it was today we are going to be in for an absolute treat. Oh, I could just 
stand here and do this all night. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday and you can hear the sound of the toaster. I'm toasting some sourdough. I'm gonna make us some sandwiches. Uh, you may be able to tell from my attire that we are off on a hike slash wine walk, as we call it, slash bougie pub crawl is another thing that we call it. Um, we're going like the four of us this time. Usually this is just Carrie and I, but we've been saying that the four of us are gonna go on a wine walk for a long time and seeing as the season is just changing, I think it's the perfect day for it. Um, it's a bit interchangeable with the weather today. I've got to be honest, we've had some sunshine, we've had some rain. So we've kind of got a pack for everything. I'm hoping that further along in the day, it will brighten up. I'm, I'm quietly confident, but we've got the backpacks out. I have a Holland Cooper knitted jumper um, and, and, I've, and I've got a shuffle gilet on. I also have like base layers and stuff like that underneath. Um, I'm just gonna swap this bread over, give it a little singe on the other side. Um, I've got some Adenola leggings, some hiking socks. I'm also taking this Holland Cooper fleece um, which I'm hoping that if it gets cold, I can pop that on and then we'll also take like waterproofs and stuff like that. I've got a battery pack uh, and some chewing gum. Of course I have a lip gloss, some eye drops just in case. I'm packing snacks, so I've got some crisps as well. That doesn't need to go in there for that long, so uh, sandwiches are a go. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit singed, but that's fine. That is so sad. I never wear this either. And it literally, now it looks tatty. I mean, you're not even going to see it, though. Everyone in the farm's going to judge me. <laughs> All the sheep. Yeah. To be fair, I would wear this down. Oh, well, that can go in the bin. <laughs> is that the bin? No, but um. I'm trying to see if we <laughs> smart ass. How long did these last for? Ages, really. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. Fresh apple chutney. Are you having apple chutney on your bagel? Yeah, I'll have everything you're doing. Okay, you. good stuff. Sounds good. I feel like it's a bit of a risky day, you know? Well, it's one of those days where anything can happen. Keep you on your toes. You could get stranded. I'm carrying the uh, um, boys. Porter, don't be rude. Now, boys, you're going to be good and you're going to play nicely. Uh, excuse me, Polly. And no wee wees. Yes, please. No, you've got to get down to it. If I tell you to get down, you get to it. Barclay, did you hear that? No wee wees. No wee wees. And you good boy playing. <laughs> good boy. Yeah. Oh, be good. Be good. It filmed this before the mega thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was from. It's dated. So it's 2021. Yeah. So you haven't seen how he changes or if he changes after saying that. No, no, no. So we've come to the first pub stop, navigation. I'm gonna get a nice little glass of wine and sit by the canal. It's probably a little bit greyer than we would have hoped, but I'm still confident that it's gonna get sunny. Well, we're on the second, the second leg. I don't know how many legs there's going to be, but... We've got two. <laughs> what do you mean? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but um, we're heading to the next pub, hopefully. So, not too bad. But this is always a very pretty area of the canal where we live. Chick chicks. Such a beautiful old church. We're just about to head to the second pub, um, but this is a really beautiful 
a little church in the next village and whenever you come past it I just love this little entrance way so gorgeous unfortunately looks like they've got their work cut out for them with their dry stone wall collapsing unfortunately but to the pub Drunken route I'm gonna start serving I don't you pour one for me pour one for I'm me not pouring I'm just gonna Oh, okay. Ali's got my. Oh no, mine is in my yeah, bag. You got it. Yeah, okay. Do you need me to get it out for you? Cheers, mate. <coughs> cheers, bitch. I love that you're like, cheers, move, but usually we say cheers, bitch. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we good? Yeah. just got home from our walk oh my gosh happy wees from all of the doggies we've got a event next door which is lovely to hear we apparently were supposed to be having fireworks but bolly's having a wee barky's having a wee you've been good boys good boys we've just been to the um most local pub and had food and then strolled home it's all looking very, very nice at night time. Good boy, good boy. Good morning, everyone. Am I allowed to laugh? Yes, I have. Um, we're at Soho Farmhouse now. We've come for a morning uh, swim and sauna and spa, just the four of us. We're gonna have brunch, relax, it's a beautiful sunny day as well, so we'll probably spend a fair amount of time here, but also um, then head back to walk the doggos, providing we're not too late. So I'm gonna get my swimming costume on and uh, probably do some lengths, enjoy some time at the pool, but yesterday was amazing. It's such a lovely day. I am hoping that you'll be able to hear me. It is very windy. And um, we are now back from farmhouse. I actually didn't speak to you at all after um, going for a swim and then to the steam room and so on. It was quite busy for a Sunday. So um, yeah, but we're now back home. Got the dogs out, heading to the local pub. No makeup on, hair's a mess. I'm wearing Holland Cooper and Beaufort and Blake, but it's like my, my country clothes. And we're heading for a couple of drinks at the pub. And honestly, this is, like my dream weekend, doing a hike on the Saturday, early in bed, up early, heading to farmhouse. I'm sure you can't hear me now. And uh, then heading to the pub again, just wonderful. I've only shown you a few snippets of what we've really been doing, especially today. But we basically spent the entire weekend drinking good wine with good company outside 
I, we probably spent, I'd say, 75% of this weekend outside, even when it was grey and not necessarily like the picture perfect day, whereas today has been the picture perfect day. It really has been one of those weekends that I think that I could combust from how wonderful it has been. If the sun stays up long enough, I'm going to head into my greenhouse and water my sweet peas. Um, we're going to light the fire because it is a little bit chilly and the temperature drops at night still. But light the fire, start Clarkson's Farm and uh, curl up on the sofa to end what has been. I just said to everyone, I was like, this has been one of my best weekends for a long time and just the simple things i just feel so good to have like got outside done lots of walking then done swimming and moving and it's just these are the things that make me feel literally electric so as the sun sets heading back home back home and in the garden just in the nick of time to head into my greenhouse everything just looks so well kept so i'm just going to give everything a quick water in here because you they're so big my shoots now look oh my gosh to be honest i left this in a complete state so at some point this week I'm gonna have to get out here and just give it a quick brush down. But what I find is when I'm using a lot of water and soil, it's actually better to just leave it and let it dry and then come back in a few days and sweep it all out and give it a good wash down. So this is all looking very exciting. Oh my gosh, my little babies. <laughs> 